Now, microbiology, the study of microbes, is a relatively recent science. Humans didn't always think there were very small things in the world that could be only seen with a microscope. We thought everything that we could see was all that there was. It took a Dutch lens maker, uh, Antony van Leeuwenhoek, to actually see the first microbes. He made the first microscopes, which are shown here. And he took pond water, he took his own fluids, and he looked at them under this microscope. And he was amazed to see that there were tiny organisms swimming around. About 100 years later, Louis Pasteur, working in France, made a science out of microbiology. He showed that microbes, like bacteria, could grow in a liquid broth, but that they were not spontaneously generated. One of the prevalent thoughts at this time was that life arose spontaneously. Louis Pasteur put an end to that theory. He also found that microbes were responsible for the processes that gave us wine and cheese and bread. And finally, uh, Robert Koch, working in Germany, showed that some microbes could cause animal and human diseases. So these were the origins of microbiology, and you can see uh, that it's a relatively recent science. Now, why do we care about microbes? There are lots of reasons that they're very important. To quote John Ingraham, they are our progenitors, our inventors, and our keepers. We evolved from microbes, and today without them, we couldn't survive. They're everywhere in us and on us, not just humans, but in animals as well. They're all over the earth. You can find them in soil. You can find them in hot springs. They're at the bottom of the ocean. They're on mountaintops. They're in the air. They're even inside of rocks. And you can find them kilometers below the surface of the earth. Only microbes can take nitrogen gas from the air and convert it into a chemical that can be used by other life forms to grow. That's called fixing nitrogen. And many plants have bacteria growing in their roots so that they can acquire the nitrogen that they need to grow. Only bacteria can degrade cellulose, which is a big component of plants. And by degrading the cellulose, they release carbon that other living things can use. If it weren't for the bacteria, the plants would just die and lie on the floor of the forest and never be recycled. So bacteria are very important for recycling nutrients in our ecosystems. Now, bacteria live all over us as well as within us as well. They're in our intestines, they're in our stomachs, they're everywhere, they're on our skin. And this diagram shows you all the different kinds of bacteria that are located on different parts of our skin alone. And the different colors on the pie chart show you the different colonies or communities of bacteria uh, that are found from your eyes to your hands to your feet. All of these bacteria have a function. They're beneficial for us. We call this our microbiome. And in fact, the number of bacteria in us outnumber the number of human cells in us. It's safe to say that without microbes, other organisms on Earth would not exist. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.